Thank you so much for this last two days. Thank you. We've learned a lot. And uh, thank you again for sharing with us uh, your experience around data warehouse modernization. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question, or my first question to you is that, in your opinion, why is it so important to modernize data warehouses? I think it's important because there are so many new uh, requirements coming in from a business now uh, because of the fact that there is a lot more data coming into the enterprise which is uh, often not uh, stored in any traditional data warehouse. So there is a requirement to uh, want to uh, combine this data with what uh, they already know in data warehouses. There's also a, a desire to become more rapid at building these kind of systems uh, and uh, be able to accommodate changes more rapidly. And, um, <clears throat> and so um, a bill, if you like, find a way to uh, make it possible to deliver value more quickly and extend beyond the capabilities of current data warehousing systems. So I think the real reason for this is, is, to, um, is to allow organizations to uh, continue to uh, bring in new data to, to produce new insights over and above what they currently can do on the data warehouse. And so that's the re reason. Also, I believe a lot of uh, data warehousing systems today uh, are not uh, capable of supporting some new requirements, mm -hmm. real time, for example, uh, or the ability to uh, <clears throat> change, uh, make changes quickly to data warehouses. Often it takes very long time to implement changes. So, so these are all pressures to try and modernize and integrate with other analytical technologies around uh, that are being used in, in, in organizations also. Okay. One of the things that you mentioned in the, in the course is around data virtualization as a way to simplify data access. Mm -hmm. But what, what I see is that some companies still very uh, still have very uh, concerns around performance. What are the messages that you could uh, well, I us. think the message there is to look a little bit more closely at what data virtualization products can do. Um, <clears throat> uh, what you have with data virtualization is the ability to cache data day these days. I can cache data to memory uh, as well as to disk. Increasingly now I have this kind of dynamic um, uh, caching capability based on usage so that you don't have to go back to the uh, sources of the, uh, uh, the, that are being accessed through the data virtualization server. I think um, by monitoring the usage of virtual uh, uh, tables in a, in, in a data virtualization server, you can um, uh, determine what is the best data to cache uh, and change the caching based upon uh, usage and workloads as they change throughout the day. Uh, in addition, uh, I can take advantage of um, a push down optimization to make the back end systems do the work to minimize the amount of data coming over the network into data virtualization servers. And so, a, a combination of this kind of caching in memory uh, data stores uh, to support caching so that I don't have to still go to, to disk. Also now we're seeing parallel query processing inside of data virtualization. In, you know, and so in that sense, that's also improving. So I think it's a combination of techniques, um, <clears throat> uh, as well as uh, layering uh, of virtual tables and things like that, that are all helping to significantly improve uh, performance and have been doing that over a number of years. And, and in addition, uh, also holding data in memory in a columnar format, which also makes it even better performance. So I think there's a combination of advances in data virtualization that have happened over the last uh, 10 years or so that have really made a difference 
to to the overall performance. So I, I don't think uh, performance. Um, you know, I think performance is now uh, obviously a first question a lot of people ask, but I think there's no quite, no, no doubt that the uh, vendors have uh, made significant strides mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm.